last one. It is our last triangle proof lesson for this unit. Today we are going to talk about HL, also known as hypotenuse leg. So up until this point, we have a bunch of things that allow us to prove two triangles congruent. We have SAS, we have ASA. We have SAS, nope, AAS is what I meant to write. AAS, and then we have SSS. We have four three-letter theorems. And we said ASS doesn't work, SSA doesn't work, AAA doesn't work. Okay, none of those work. These are the only four ways we have to prove that triangles are congruent. And after we prove them congruent, we could use that CPCTC thing. Make sure you never prove triangles congruent based on CPC. That's not a thing. CPCTC has to come after congruent triangles, okay? Now, here's the thing. Before we said ASS is not a thing, not even if you call it SSA so that it doesn't sound like a bad word, it's not a thing. Well, it's kind of lying to you, just a little bit. SSA is not a thing unless your angle is a right angle, okay? So SSA does work when you are finding right triangles that end up being congruent. And in that case, instead of calling it SSA, we call it HL or hypotenuse leg. Now, the reason for that is, if you remember a little bit from middle school, when you have a right triangle, there's that thing called the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That means once you know two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third side because I could say 8 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. So I'd have 64 plus b squared equals 100, subtract 64, and I get b squared equals 36, b equals 6. That would be 6. Okay. If I had a 6 and a 10, same thing happens. 6 squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. 36 plus b squared equals 100. And I'd say, wait a second, if I got a 36 here, b squared's got to be 64, so b is 8. Okay? Those two triangles are congruent by technically SSS because they have all the same sides. Except I kind of ignored the fact that it's not just SSS, it's SSS based on a right angle. Okay, so in a lot of ways, it's kind of SAS, because I do know all three sides, but I've got an angle in there also. Okay, before we start this problem, I got to tell you, I accidentally put a letter in the wrong place, so I need you guys to fix that for me, okay, or else this isn't going to make any sense. This is supposed to be a B, and that's supposed to be an A. This is supposed to be a B prime. And that's supposed to be an A prime. So if you could fix that, that would make the rest of this make sense. So first fix that typo. I apologize for it. All right. Now, given two triangles, A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime, if C, B, A, and C, B, A prime are right angles, okay, so if we know that these are right angles, and if A, B equals A, B, that's a leg, cool. And if A, C equals A, C, that's a hypotenuse. What I notice here is I have A, S, S. But if you notice you have ASS, but your angle is a right angle, then the triangles are congruent by HL. So what's important here is that this is really ASS, but the A is a right angle, okay? And then instead, once I notice the A is the right angle, then we call it HL. So let me show you how that works. All right. In exercise one, we are given that AD is perpendicular to BD. I mean, great. And then BD is perpendicular to BC. Great. And AB is congruent to CD. Okay, fine. Prove these triangles congruent. All right. So I'm going to start with my givens. AD is perpendicular to BD. Okay, that would be true. And then BD is perpendicular to BC. That would be true. So when I see perpendicular lines, I'm going to use those to make two statements. One, identify the right angles. Two, state that the right angles are equal. So if I'm going to identify these right angles, that means angle ADB and angle DBC 
are right angles. And that's because perpendicular lines form right angles. And then I know that ADB is congruent. Oops, ADB, pardon me. DBC. Because all right angles are congruent. All right, so I've taken care of those. And then they told me that AB equals CD. Fine. I've exhausted my givens. I'm going to look at the picture. And you know what? The picture has a shared line. BD is shared. So BD is congruent to BD by the reflexive property. Cool. And then when I look at that, I realize, oh, you know what? I have an angle, a side, and another side. Oh, I have ASS. That's the one I'm not supposed to use. But wait, it isn't really ASS. It's HL because the A is a right angle. Now, here's the thing. Once you realize it's HL, HL takes two steps. The first step is to clearly state that the right angles created right triangles. So I'm going to say triangle ABD and triangle CDB are right triangles. And I literally am just going to say they are right triangles because they contain right angles. Then, since I've established it's a right triangle, that means it, it has a hypotenuse. So now I can say ABD is congruent to CDB by HL. Okay? So when it comes to right angles, things come in pairs. When you see perpendicular, you have this pair of statements. When you know you want to use HL, you always have that pair of statements. HL takes two steps every time. Once you realize, ah, I need HL, your first step is to say, I have right angles, which means I have right triangles. And then your next step is to say, all right, now that I've established those are right triangles, this is going to be true by HL. All right, so now let's do it down here. So I have PA is perpendicular, PB is perpendicular, AR is BR. That's all given. Let's go through our proof one step at a time. So if PA is perpendicular to AR and BR, I'm going to call this angle one and angle two. I can say angle one and angle two are right angles because perpendicular lines form right angles. And then I can say, all right, if that's true, then all right angles are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle two because all right angles are congruent. Cool. Check. AR equals BR. Okay. Helpful, but nothing else I can get from that. I've exhausted my given. Let me look at the picture. Oh, I see a shared side, so I can use a reflexive property. PR is congruent to PR by the reflexive property. Okay, and so now if I look at what I have marked, I have an angle, a side, and another side. That's ASS, but since my angle is a right angle, I can call it HL. HL takes two steps. So I can say that the two triangles are right triangles. So PAR and let's see, PAR, PBR are right triangles. And that's because they have right angles. And then based on that, PAR is congruent to PBR by HL. But wait a second, Let's remember, they didn't tell you to prove the triangle's congruent. Oh, yeah, I just kind of kept going because I knew I could do it. So, you know, why not? But that's not what they asked for. They wanted me to prove that PR bisects APB. Okay, well, let's see, maybe this triangle congruence helped me. So if PR, if 
I'm supposed to prove that PR bisects this angle, that would mean I'd have to prove that these little parts are equal. Aha. Since I know the triangles are equal, I know that their corresponding parts are equal. So in number seven, I'm going to call this angle three and angle four and say angle three must now be congruent to angle four by CPCTC. Again, CPCTC is the shortened way of saying since the triangles are congruent, those other parts you didn't know about yet, those are congruent too. And if three equals four, then PR bisects APB because the angle um, forms two congruent angles. Or I should say the angle with the bisector creates two congruent angles. All right. So that, I believe, is that. And what you need to really get from this day is that ASS is still not a thing. But if you notice an ASS situation, you get to call it HL, but it takes two steps. You have to identify that you have right triangles, and then you can go for HL. And with that, I'm done. Have a glorious day.